Terry Yaffe, and welcome to Coach World TV. Tonight is my guest. I have Keith Petrie. Hi, Keith. Hi, Terry. Thank How you for you? having You're me. You're welcome. Keith is founder and CEO of eBranding Me, which is a social media mentoring service, and the service focuses on employment for recent grads. So, Keith, tell us a little bit about eBranding Me. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. You're welcome. eBranding Me is a peer to peer mentoring service okay. for Generation Y students. Mm. So tell people what Gen Y means oh, for those Gen that might not know. Gen Y is anybody right now between the ages of 16 and 29. Oh, okay. And I, the, focus, the focus of eBranding Me is really to educate them on how to be socially responsible online, utilizing mm -hmm. new technology that we refer to as social media. Okay. I'm sure everyone knows social media, um, but go into a little depth about it. Give them a, a little bit of more of a length and breadth. Well, I mean, most people, especially Generation Y students, mm -hmm. are active online. Mm -hmm. Actually, 99% of Gen Y have a Facebook profile, and there's over 700 million people on Facebook. And you can do one of two things on Facebook. On one hand, you can damage your reputation pretty badly. Ah, yes, we've seen a lot of that going on recently. And on the other hand, you can really use it to your advantage and build a positive presence mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. And that's what I personally recommend people do. Yeah. Um, even older people. I mean, I, as, as a business owner, um, I'm on Facebook, I have a fan page, I'm on Twitter, I'm on uh, LinkedIn, so I've tried to cover all of my bases. So it's not only for Gen Y. No, I completely mm, agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so, Gen Y is already established on Facebook, yeah. and the fastest growing segments of the Facebook community are anything but Gen Y. Mm. Actually, one of the most recent studies, I believe, showed that 45 to 55 year old females was the fastest growing segment. Wow, that's very interesting. So people are on Facebook for a lot of reasons, or LinkedIn or Twitter. I mean, it's, you know, I think of Facebook as a social bulletin board. It's a good way to describe it. <laughs> Actually, a funny survey, uh, survey that McCann did recently ah. shows that 53% of 16 to 22 year olds would rather give up their sense of smell than lose their Facebook profile. That's how important it is to them. <laughs> I think that it's very important for them, but on the other hand, you need to make sure that it represents you in a mm. professional manner mm. because a lot of hiring managers yes. are actually required by corporate governance to look into social media profiles of potential job candidates. 79% of them actually are required to look into it, and 35% of hiring managers and recruiters solely rely on a candidate's social media presence to base their decision. And 70% wow. of those decisions are all on their Facebook profile. Facebook, would you also say LinkedIn, um, or primary, or is it a, a mix, or? Well, when you're looking for damaging, re damaging material, you, you really go to Facebook. Uh, However, LinkedIn can really play a positive role. Mm -hmm. And since its IPO recently, it's been mm -hmm. growing at a massive rate. I believe it's about 1 million new users per week. And there's over 100 million people on the website already. Wow. So, in my opinion, it's really important to actually have the presence on LinkedIn. And it's even more important to have a 100% complete profile, which is pretty difficult to do yeah. if you're just starting out. Yeah. However, the key to it is just completing your past experience to right. highlight what you've right. accomplished. Exactly. Your educational standpoint, where you are in school, if you graduated, what degrees mm -hmm. you have, and really show your experience, show your expertise, and then highlight a little bit of what you're looking for. Because if you have a 100% complete profile with three recommendations, mm. hiring managers and recruiters search. They put queries into LinkedIn really? to search your topic line. Mm. You know, so how long do you think it's been going on that companies look to LinkedIn or Facebook for hires? I, it can't be that long. Uh, it, it surprisingly enough, or it's, it can be. It, it's closing <laughs> in on the end of 2011 relatively quickly, halfway through. Yeah. And most of the social media stats that a lot of people rely on are still coming from 2009. I believe Career Builder did a, a very uh, big study back then. And since then, we've been progressing more and more towards a very heavy reliance on social media. It's actually even more important now to make sure that a potential hiring manager, a spouse, mm. anybody, 40% uh, of people actually research their dates online before they go on them. 
and 80 million people are Googled each and every day. So you want to make sure that people are finding the right you. So it's even more important that if your name's John Smith, you somehow <laughs> create some <laughs> visibility online. And I guess so. that's a small little plug for a company called Visibility that's run by really? James Alexander. Uh -huh. And they have a Google Me button that you can create yourself. And you can make sure and authenticate that all the results of this Google Me button actually show who you are and your accomplishments and your social media profiles. As opposed to another John Smith. Exactly. They could be looking at, but it's not the right one. So it. Um, so when people go on Facebook, you know, um, they they post a lot of funky, funny pictures. Um, they, you know, put weird things on it, and not so much on LinkedIn. W what is your suggestion? More for Facebook. I think than for LinkedIn. LinkedIn's pretty straight and narrow. LinkedIn uh, is a yeah, professional yeah, networking a professional, website. And Facebook is a is a community that you right. socialize in. And right. honestly, I believe that it should be a community to socialize in. Okay. But that being said, you need to understand the privacy settings. Ah. And they're very granular mm -hmm. and they change almost on a weekly basis. They're hard to keep up with. On top of that, one of the most recent developments and debates is actually facial recognition software built into Facebook that is now auto-tagging mm -hmm. people's faces in pictures from their friends and peers. And this could be dangerous because it's one thing if you get photographed at a school networking event mm -hmm. or a, in a professional mm -hmm. setting. Right. But it's another thing if you're in the background of one of your friend's photos and it happened to be at a party or there may be some illegal activity going on or alcohol or anything that could mm -hmm. put you in a negative light. Yeah, I, I would definitely think that you, today, you really have to be vigilant about what you put up. Um, as we said, not so much LinkedIn, but on Facebook, even Twitter. Um, I don't know that hiring people go to Twitter at all, but certainly with Facebook, it, you have to be so vigilant about what you put up as far as pictures go or what you say on, on Facebook. Well, I could address multiple points yeah, uh, there, do. but first and foremost, if you do protect your Facebook mm -hmm. profile mm -hmm. correctly and create lists that denote who can see what and mm -hmm. what your privacy settings are, you can use it in a professional manner. Okay. And they do have a program called Branch Out, and it's a way to actually okay. network your way into a job, into your ideal position, actually. Say you wanted to work for Apple. Okay. Or Google. Mm -hmm. Or any of, mm -hmm. you know, especially mm -hmm. tech businesses uh -huh. that have these reputations of being amazing to work for. Right. You could just search branch out and say, show me who I know that's worked at one of these companies or currently works there. And it will do a degree of separation search and show you that your friend Amelia could introduce you to Eric who happens to work at Google. Wow. That, that, that's phenomenal. So really? that, that's a really positive aspect of uh -huh. Facebook because on LinkedIn, if you get somebody to send you a request to be a connection of yours, you only have positive content on right. LinkedIn. Absolutely. You're not going to second guess it. I don't even second guess it if I know mm -hmm. the person. Right. However, if you get a friend request on Facebook, you're going to second guess if you want them to see that information. Well, you're hopefully going to second guess if you yeah. want them to see that information. Right. So it's really important that you understand Facebook is your community of peers that want the best for you and are looking out for your future. Okay. So if you reach out on Facebook with a serious question or request, hopefully you're going to get a great response. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's for me, you know, you're young, you've, you've grown up with all of this. People that are of a different generation, this is all, you know, only x number of years old i mean we've had to scramble to to keep up with all of the aspects of all of these social media because they're important for our business or we want to be part of something um, it's, it's not second nature now it might be now yeah. but a couple of years ago i don't think so i i definitely agree with you and there's a lot of misconceptions about social media, and I definitely fell victim to it as well. I mean, email, I, I believe, is celebrating its 40th anniversary. 
who would have guessed that? Because I definitely wasn't around when that email was sent. <laughs> but nowadays it's beginning to catch on and definitely everybody across generation gaps, it doesn't matter. There are some laggers and there are some early adopters. And I, I think that's just typical of any technology, regardless of whether it's social media or computer programming or engineering. You uh, couldn't ask me to build something. No. However, you know, you grew up with the age of computers and you know for you it's like using a telephone it's more and intuitive yeah i remember when i was working you know we had a typewriter for a long time and then all of a sudden computers came out and i had to go and take a course and try to figure it out and understand it and it took forever for me to totally get what this was all about, um, whereas it's second hand, I mean second nature to somebody of uh, in their 20s. And it's definitely being shown, especially at the corporate level, yeah. because a lot of these businesses are trying to figure out how to utilize social media and they don't understand. Mm. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. As you said, right. it's just something that we grew up with and right. we matured with mm -hmm. and we were educated with right. as a tool. Right. So I actually think that it's kind of valuable and companies are realizing that as well. Mm -hmm. Some companies, especially some larger ones, are bringing in generation Y students, still current students, to assist them and to consult them on how to utilize this new technology. And I don't even mean young professionals. I actually mean current high school students are going into mm -hmm. WPP headquarters to assist them on what technologies they should use for mm -hmm. certain marketing campaigns. Right. It's almost like reverse mentoring. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. Um, where well, you've got younger people teaching more seasoned people what to do with when it comes to uh, technology and today's technology. Uh, but it's it's amazing, you know. It, before email, we used to have to post a letter through What's that? Snail, <laughs> through snail mail. <laughs> but it wasn't that long ago. I it agree. really wasn't. You know, now you send an email and you get a response before it could be two weeks. You know, it, 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 you think about it, it's like the days of the covered wagon, you know, when they had to carry the mail. <laughs> I mean, that's also why our economy uh, can sustain this growth right now. I mean, right now it's not doing too well, but yeah. basically we can accomplish that much more mm. in a shorter period of time mm. because there's less lag in between tasks. Exactly, exactly. And of course, if you throw in now, you know, Skype and video conferencing, I mean, everything is so fast paced that you almost get spoiled. What? I have to wait an hour before? I get a response it's it's definitely it, it actually comes down to etiquette almost nowadays yeah. I was recently at a conference and somebody was reviewing how to uh, respond to a client's request and the rule turned into that as soon as you saw their email regardless of if it was a Tuesday night at 9 p.m. or Friday night you were out to dinner or potentially Saturday you were playing golf if you see the email you should respond immediately and let them know you have 10 minutes to respond ah. and tell them I saw your email I can't address it right now but I will get back to you by this time and I very think that nice. that's actually a very important rule and yeah, I personally I abide by it that 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 is actually great um, because I know sometimes when you send an email and it can take you somebody three days to get back to you just let them know you're busy a, yeah it, it's almost unheard of you know, if, as you said, for somebody to say, hey, got your email busy, we'll see it, we'll get back to you. That just makes a lot of sense. So we're going to kind of segue because okay. you have two other professions or two other services that you provide and would love to hear about both of them. Well, so, thank you for the <laughs> smooth segue. <laughs> E-branding so. e me is actually mm -hmm. a service that enables Generation Y students to brand themselves mm -hmm. so that they can secure employment. And in creating eBranding Me, mm -hmm. I branded myself as a social media expert. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to claim any guru or ninja and any of those fun <laughs> words, but I began to be inquired by small businesses and other individuals that happen to know me through my network uh -huh. to help them with their current projects. So I, I started taking on a few clients. I did this individually for mm -hmm. some time, mm -hmm. and then 
a friend of mine called me and said he happened to be doing the same thing for a small restaurant in, in his town. My business was growing. I was excited about that. So we ended up teaming up together. Oh, great. And we started Consult Us. And my business partner is Michael Giffis, and it's been going really well. We've been live for about four months now. Mm -hmm. And some of our clients are small mom and pop shops, and other ones are national chains. And we're really excited to be doing work with them and having fun utilizing these same tools that you can use to damage your reputation to get in touch and connect with, build a com community around, and I mean, overall, really market to people utilizing these tools. So tell us a little bit about Consult, consult Us. What exactly does it do? We're, we're a small business consulting firm. Say. We're, we're a small business consulting <laughs> okay, firm that so focuses consult. on how to utilize both new digital tools, okay. but also a strategic mix with traditional marketing tactics as well. Okay. So uh, typical projects could range from anything where you're doing guerrilla marketing in Central Park in New okay. York City mm -hmm. to printing flyers, if that's what's being used in that current market, or creatively purchasing Google AdWords, uh, creating an online uh, uh -huh. Facebook okay. profile, or utilizing Twitter so it's a real-time conversation and engagement. The most important aspect, which is actually something we didn't touch on with eBranding okay. Me as well, is that whether you're an individual seeking employment, or you're a small business trying to garner a community around your product or service, you need a central location. You need a hub. Mm. So for the individual, you want to have a blog. It can be built on WordPress, potentially okay, Squarespace, right. mm -hmm. uh, any yeah. of these v free available tools. Mm -hmm. You can build a platform that links to your various social media platforms. It houses, if you're a student, your current expertise, what you're studying in school, your past experiences, okay. and the most important aspect is actually being able to download a resume. Because when somebody finds you, they want it instantaneously. Like you said, they don't want to <laughs> wait. So it's the same thing in my approach at uh -huh. Consult Us with small businesses. You really want to enable somebody looking for a restaurant in New York to find you very easily, uh -huh. find out where you are, see your... Twitter account. Let's mm -hmm. say you're a food truck and you move around. Mm -hmm. You need instantaneous okay. updates, okay. geolocation, which we haven't mm -hmm. even touched on. Ah, and okay. you also need a menu. The menu is the equivalent of the resume in this case. Okay. You need it readily available and it needs to be there for people to read and mm -hmm. search engines to read to optimize your presence. Very <laughs> mind-boggling the whole thing to me, but sounds like you've got it down. I try. And you and your partner. That's great. Very entrepreneurial. Yes, I would, I would say. hope so. <laughs> you are. I mean, um, and you've got yet another business on top of e-branding me and consult us. And is that an offshoot of of these two companies that all of a sudden you figured out a third one? Uh, no, it's actually been a passion of mine. I've loved traveling, and I've been mm -hmm. lucky enough to travel a lot with mm -hmm. my family and mm -hmm. by myself more recently. And it's called I Got a Guide to get I to the got point. A guide. And it's it's a online startup in the travel industry. It launched just over two months ago. And simply put, we connect local and visiting tourists with professional and amateur tour guides. So what the way I like to describe it is we, we're the Airbnb of activities. And if in case you're not familiar with Airbnb, let me describe I Got a Guide. Please. It enables and empowers any individual, currently only in New York City, to come to the website and say, I'm a very knowledgeable local. Mm. I've lived in the Lower East Side for years. I know the best places to get food. They're off the beaten path. You're not going to get stuck at a tourist mm. trap and pay a ridiculous amount of money. And you're going to enjoy yourself. You're a unique person and you need a unique experience while you're in a new city and visiting a destination. I mean, I can't tell you how many pictures I've seen of people holding up the Statue of Liberty behind them. <laughs> and I, I think that it's really important to make that offline mm -hmm. connection with somebody. I myself get bogged down in social media and new technology. Right, exactly. I need to put it away every mm -hmm. so often, shake somebody's hand, and go out for a drink with them. So talk, continue talking about I Got a Guide. I mean, <laughs> a little bit more. Because All right, it's so really fascinating that... Um, this whole process that in any part of New York there could be someone available 
to take whether New York Cityites or out of towners and say, um, I can take you around the Lower East Side, let's just use that. I can take you shopping to great boutiques, um, I can, we can find you a great hotel, um, and great restaurants down there. Yep. So the guide would have to be pretty familiar with that particular area. That's correct. So a little background story. Yeah, please. I have two great experiences that kind of led me to this okay. realization that we needed a way, a community online, to not only connect with the local, but facilitate that interaction offline when you actually visit the, the location. Mm -hmm. So I was studying abroad in Galway, Ireland, which I miss a lot, ah. but I was then traveling a bunch in between classes, mm -hmm. of course. And while I was in Florence, Italy, I went out one night. I went around to a bunch of local establishments. I happened to be with a local tour guide. Mm -hmm. Just by coincidence, he mm -hmm. knew one of the people I was visiting. And three in the morning, we're walking home, enjoying ourselves, and we're trying to go to sleep. We're obviously tired. And he says we have one more stop. After a few of us complain, we end up going. We knock on a garage door. A garage door, side street, Florence, Italy, cobblestone, <sighs> 3 a.m. Okay, I don't know what I'm in scary. for. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, garage door opens up, and between 3.30 and 5.30, every night, it's called a secret bakery, and they provide fresh baked goods to all the storefronts around Florence. It's an incredible experience, very cheap prices, fresh baked goods. You couldn't ask for anything more, especially at 3 in the morning. So you were able to garner some delicious... Yes. Uh, and so that was just, uh, that was, that was something I would never have been able mm -hmm. to experience right. uh -huh. if I wasn't exposed to a local mm -hmm. tour guide. He happened to be a tour guide. He doesn't need to be a tour guide. Right. And right. so that was one thing that led me to it. And more recently in December 2010, so six months ago, mm -hmm. I was in Miami with my girlfriend. And we, coming back from a cruise, had the afternoon there. We asked the hotel where we should go for lunch. They ended up directing us to a tourist trap. We had two uh, cups of coffee, uh, $18. Oh, goodness. I've never had, even Starbucks is a deal right, compared to that. Right. So we, we were really upset. We didn't eat lunch there. And we, we ended up going to a taxi driver. And we said, where would you go for lunch? Mm -hmm. We ended up at a small mm -hmm. place. They didn't speak any English. And I, by any means, mm -hmm. do not speak Spanish very well. Mm -hmm. And we ordered two sandwiches. They were enormous. Mm -hmm. Plate of French fries. Mm -hmm. We had two beers. We enjoyed ourselves. And it was a total of maybe 12 to $14 in there. Yeah. That was a unique local experience right. that only somebody who lived there and was familiar with the area could have given us. And to be honest, we have 20 pictures of us eating those sandwiches and smiling. We have no pictures of us yelling yeah. at the waiters mm -hmm. about $18 of coffee. So did all of these experiences bring you to the realization of, or the idea of, I got a guide? They're, they all play their own uh -huh, equal uh -huh. parts in I Got a Guide. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting you say that because I Got a Guide encompasses values that I've learned and preached at eBranding Me, mm -hmm. the tools that I am now familiar with because of my social media consulting and my personal life experiences mm -hmm. of me growing up uh -huh. and traveling. Mm -hmm. And what those three things are is on the first hand, trust online. eBranding Me, you have to build a reputation around yourself and be trusted as an expert or as somebody who you can be approached by and actually interact with on a day-to-day -day basis at a job. So I need that same value to be instilled in visitors of I Got A Guide through the, the tour guides who list on the site. So there has to be some sort of transparency uh -huh. and review right. system. I understand. Then there was the social media mm -hmm. aspect, which is how I plan to market I Got A Guide and expand it. Okay. Without going into too much detail, it's really Tell valuable yeah. to uh, understand the space that you're in, understand that people utilize these new technologies, and that that's how you're going to reach them. If somebody's utilizing a platform, don't make them change. Come talk to them on the channel that they're most mm -hmm. comfortable mm -hmm. interacting on. If you're trying to reach an older generation, you're not going to use Twitter. Right. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to reach Gen Y, you might as well get on Facebook because 50% of Gen Y logs on the Facebook every day. That being said, then my personal experiences, you combine them all together, put in a little mixer, maybe <laughs> a, a blender per se, and out comes I got a guide. 
So, um, the one thing that I'm hearing is, th is for the, all three, is there has to be trust. Yes. Uh, you used it, and I'm just picking up on it, that whatever your service is or whatever your company is, whether it's uh, e-branding me, consult us, or I got a guy, you're always starting with, with some values as, as at the core. Trust. Yes or else people aren't going to buy your services. Yes, and and beyond that, you, you need humility. Mm -hmm. you, you need to be trusted, and you need to be able to ask for help. And I guess to close on sort of a, a great story, a great use of social media, there, there are two great examples, and one's McKinsey Stewart, who graduated about a year ago, May 2010, uh, along with myself at a different mm -hmm. school, and she started PR Stud Chat, which was public relations student chat. Mm. And she started it because she didn't have classes that brought in real world mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. from the PR industry, mm -hmm. which she wanted to enter. Right. So instead of trying to go to these job interviews or reaching out to industry experts and saying she knew what she was talking about, she said, I have no idea what I'm doing and I cannot wait to enter my career as a PR mm -hmm. associate. Mm -hmm. And because of that, she became branded as a amazing individual in the PR industry mm -hmm. and built up a Twitter following, had a blog that she was very active on, and she was very transparent. She showed that mm -hmm. she had a social mm -hmm. side that mm -hmm. people could interact mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. and she also so showed that she was professional. And on top of it all, she asked questions and made a network surrounding her vision, her goal as securing employment in the PR industry, and she had a job offer before she graduated. Well, there you go. Creativity. There you that's, go. That, that's one aspect of it that we're hearing. And certainly trust and authenticity and transparency that kind of weaves throughout um, everything you've talked about. We have a couple of seconds left. Is there anything you want to impart or leave any websites you want to throw <laughs> up there for I, people to go to and see? I have a long list of websites. Well, you uh, have a couple of seconds, so throw <laughs> one or two out. And of course, the main one is actually my my personal <laughs> website, which is just keithpetrie.com. Okay. And you can follow me on Twitter at Keith E. Petrie. And oh, okay. my my main new business is I Got a Guide, and that's I G O T T A G U I D E. And I'd be very interested in talking to anybody if they wanted to brand themselves online. That's great. Well. I want to say thank you. You have a couple of seconds. Say thank you so much for coming and for being part of tonight's uh, interviewing process. And um, I'll look forward to talking to you at some point Sounds when we good. can do that. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Terry.